Here we have a root fracture on upper left one. The roots have separated and that has caused a significant bone loss, in particular with the distal bony peak. Right, what type of extraction suckers is this? This is a type 2B where we have absence of coronal two-third of the bone and we have a seven to nine millimeter of free gingiva. The significance of this type of extraction socket is that that um, soft tissue is going to collapse in and we are going to lose the width of the crest. Now that will also compromise the restoration that we are going to put in, whether it's a bridge or a dental implant. Right, so in this case we perform socket preservation using a collagenated xenograft and covered it with a porcelain membrane. And by doing so, we have repaired and restored the distal bony peak. You can see the before extraction and socket preservation to the left and the results of the uh, socket preservation to the right. This is a week after the extraction. This is two months after the extraction and this is three and a half months after the extraction. Ridge and socket preservation is not going to entirely stop bone resorption, but as you can see, we've had some minimal bone resorption here. Also in this view, we've, had, we've maintained the height of the bone. We've lost some of the papillas, but the overall shape of the bone and the soft tissues are maintained. Right, this is at the time of implant placement. As you can see, we have good height of bone. The soft tissue has not collapsed. We have plenty of keratinized tissue. Right, as we predicted, this is definitely socket type 2B. You can see the margins and the bony peaks. But please have a look at the bone grafting material that has integrated with the bone. It's not yet fully mature. You can see the bo bony peak distally that's been repaired and you can see the extent of the uh, bone grafting material. The most remarkable part here is the bleeding. So that tissue has lots of blood vessels in it and you can see as soon as we dry it up, it starts bleeding again. As I'm preparing my osteotomy, you can see that the bone is not yet mature and, and it's very soft, but that's fine. As long as I get a good primary stability, I can then carry on reshaping everything and create a crest. The slow resorption property of xenograft is going to maintain the shape of the crest for me over a longer period of time. Here I'm placing my healing abutment and a PRF membrane. I'm tucking my PRF membrane over the site and suturing the soft tissue by displacing it more coronally. This is to improve the amount of soft tissue I have and for me to be able to create the papillas with my restoration. The scaffolding nature of the xenograph has maintained that hard tissue and therefore maintained my soft tissue. By not doing socket preservation, I would have needed to do much more extensive bone grafting in order to create better hard and soft tissue. This is a week after surgery at the time of suture removal. And this is three months later at the time of fit. Converting an extraction socket 2B to this beautiful ridge with plenty of keratinized tissue was only made easier by doing that socket preservation at the right time. We could have achieved similar sort of results by just doing bone augmentation, but you could see the surgery, it was made a lot easier 
uh, since the socket was preserved. And here you can see the gingival margin not differing hugely with a uh, pre-extraction photograph.